So my brother-in-law has just moved into a new place and he's asked us to build him a dining table with two matching benches. He's got a specific idea of what he wants and how he wants it to look. So we're actually gonna use scaffold boards to build the entire thing. We wanna put a little bit of our own spin on this project. So we've actually designed it so that we've got a cooking plate inside the table. That way he can cook dinner whilst he's sitting down. Okay, enough chatting. Better help John get the rest of the wood in. Brilliant. Okay, so that's all the cutting done. We've just been processing that on the table saw and the mitre saw just to take off the bulk and get everything down roughly to its final size. So this build is gonna be split into four main sections. We've got regular width scaffold boards for the table top. This section here is ready for the stools and we've taken a little bit of width off of them just to make them not quite as bulky. These sections here are gonna be glued up in pairs and this is for the legs. And at the very end there, we've got the aprons for the bottom underside of the table. So first job, we're going to get one clean surface on all of these legs before gluing them together in pairs. Then we're going to move on to downing the tops of the benches and the table. So now we've skimmed off a little bit of those legs, just to clean up that one face, we're gonna run them through the thicknesser to get them down to 100 mil. As far as we're going to go on the legs now, we're going to start working on the top and we're going to get this boy down together. Oh, Woohoo! <laughs> Idiot. Okay, so these are the boards we're going to use for our tabletop. Now, we need to make a little cut on each one so that we get a really nice tight join together when we put our dowel joints in. We would actually use our table saw for this, but we don't fully trust the boards to be completely square, uh, so we get to set up our track saw. Now, if you look along the edge of the track saw, you can see how bowed these boards are, and if we take that nice straight cut on our table saw, it's going to translate to a not square board. By doing it on the track saw, we're guaranteed to get a nice square edge. The top of the table is made up of four boards, so the two centre boards have a joint on both sides. So far we've just taken off one of those sides with the trap saw, but now we're taking it over to the table saw to make sure they stay parallel. So 
So we've cut all those seams off and we've whacked it in some clamps just to see how it looks. And actually these seams are coming together really nicely. To make them a little bit stronger so that the glue doesn't have to do all the work by itself, we're gonna put some dowels between each of these boards and that's gonna hopefully make things a lot stronger. Let's go. Right, so top's all done, nice and dry. We left it overnight, as you can tell from Matt's change of clothes. I am still in the same clothes, it's embarrassing. So next job is to start making the base. We've got the legs done, so now we need to start sorting out the aprons. We need to mill them into the right size uh, and then get them all attached and stuff like that. So let's give it a crack. Do you want to do a thumbs up? Go on. There you go. <laughs> So just put the table upside down, just so we can see how it all dry fits together with the legs and the aprons that we've just cut to size. So before we attach those aprons up, we want to make sure we've got all the joinery done for the bottom stretches. So we're going to take them to the table saw, cut some little rebates out and get those cut to size. Okay, so that's everything for the base cut. As you can see, we've put it all together and it's fitting really nicely. Everything's got all nice and square. So to make sure everything's really nice and strong, as well as gluing it, we're going to dowel it all up. So all we've done so far is go around each joint and mark which one pairs with which. So I've just cut this little groove on the inside faces of all of the aprons. Now what that's going to be for is attaching the tabletop to the base a little bit later on. Let's get this thing glued up. Right, so it's a new day in the shop. This thing's all glued up. We've got the tabletop just resting on top of the base. Uh, I think it looks all right. Looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like a table. <laughs> Finally. You saw us earlier on cutting that little slot all the way on this side of the aprons. We're going to cut some little plywood blocks, and those blocks are going to slot into the little groove and then screw up into the table. It's going to allow for seasonal wood movement of this top and stop it cracking in places if anything expands or contracts. After that, all we've got to do, trim this tabletop to its final length with a track saw. And get on sand. Sanding. Let's do it. Right, so that is the entire base all sanded and finished. And we've also did the underside of that tabletop. Uh, now it's just to use our little buttons we made earlier to attach the whole thing together. So we're gonna do the final sanding on the tabletop once we've flipped it over. Uh, we don't wanna take off too much because we wanna keep some of that character. That's the whole reason we use the scaffold boards, give it that kind of rustic feel. So we're gonna do a light sanding, hopefully retain some of like the saw marks and stuff like that. Nailed it. <laughs> Right, so it's 
it's been a few days since we attached this. Now we've got to get cracking with sand on the top. Dry weather for once, so let's do it outside. So effectively what we've done is we've built a table. Well done. Yeah. No, uh, this is perfectly usable as it is. You can stop the video now and this table will be perfectly fine. But what we want to do, and hopefully what you've seen in the thumbnail, is we want to sink a cooking surface into it. So what we're thinking of doing is removing a section of the table in the middle and then dropping this hot plate in so it sits flush with the top of the table. We'll take off these handles, cut the drip tray underneath, and then that way you can sit at the dinner table and cook your steaks there and then. big moment we've got all the markings done Johnny's gonna undo the top of all the buttons we've put on there earlier so we can put it down on some foam use the track saw to cut this out and we've really got our fingers crossed that this doesn't go wrong <laughs> Got some news, I'm afraid. The track saw uh, worked perfectly. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Didn't doubt us for a second, did you? Of course not. So, all we've got to do now is we've got to work out how to attach this hot plate into the uh, centre of the table. So, what we're planning on doing is using some of this aluminium angle to make a little box that then sits just underneath the table. This way, the top of the hot plate would go nice and flush with the top of the table, and we're going to put a plywood bottom onto it just so no one can actually touch the hot plate from underneath. Aluminium frame in place, moment of truth, see if it fits. Look at that. There we go, all finished. We are very happy with this. It has taken a long time. As you can tell, my beard has got pretty long in the time since we started this, but we are really happy with the results. So since you last saw this in the workshop, we've added a few extra finishing touches. Let's show you around what we've done. Right, so first up, we've made a pair of benches. You saw us cutting the wood for this earlier. Basically, we went through a very similar process as the actual table. The only difference was, along the top here, we used some dowels to attach the legs and the top together. So secondly, at the beginning of the video, you saw us removing those scaffold straps. So we sprayed these in black, cleaned them up a little bit, and added them to each leg of the table. We thought this was a really nice way to add a bit of character and just give a nod back to where the material originally came from. So the thing that's taken us the longest to do is to get the colour of the table and the stools right. We had a really specific look that we were going for, so we had to really make sure that we were going to hit that with the stain options that we had. So we decided to go for a wood dye instead of a wood stain, and the first thing we did was to dilute that 50-50 with water, and we applied that across the entire table, stools, legs, everything, because that would avoid any blotching that can sometimes come when you apply stain or dye to pine. 
After the wash coat we applied two more full coats of dye and then we went on to applying two coats of wipe on poly and we sanded in between just with a high grit sandpaper. We finished that up with a coat of clear bry wax and we applied that across the whole table with four naught steel wool. And the reason we did that is just to buff off some of the shine left over from the wipe on poly. We think we've made a pretty dramatic difference considering that the scaffold board started out looking like this. So we also came back and sprayed that aluminium housing that holds the hot plate black, just so it matches those straps. So do you remember that piece that we cut out of the middle of the table ready to put the hot plate in? We kept it. So we thought it would be a really handy thing to have that if you ever wanted to take the hot plate out, you could put this thing back in and you can use it basically in a flat table again. So we decided to route a couple of grooves on each side and we added a rope handle so that you could lift it up out of place and carry it to anywhere else in the kitchen. This could be really handy for moving plates, cutlery, anything around the kitchen and bring it to the table when you need it. So we're really happy with how it came out, but I don't know about you, me and Matt are super hungry. So let's go test it out and see if it works. That moment when you realise that you've definitely just made the outtake. Yeah. <laughs> right, get back down, you idiot. Oh, God, I really have.